The reason why the Muslim Mental Health Conference is important to me is because it allows a platform for our faith leaders, our healthcare providers, as well as our scientific researchers to come together and talk about the issues that affect our community. Some of my most favorite uh, presentations are ones that get really real and raw and talk about the, just honestly what's going on in our community. Today, if we want to talk about social justice and what's happened to people, we can't not talk about brain health. So he takes the picture. Two weeks later, he comes back. Malik, look again down the hall. Guess what they said about you? He and other participants have said they didn't even know abuse was happening at the first time. So what do we do about that? They thought you was a gangbanger. And the reason they thought I was a gangbanger is because I'm a black male. And that's the only thing they associate with black males is criminal status. Later in that interview, she talks about when have we ever had a chance to breathe, to just say, okay, there's not going to be any racism this year. Islamic University says that if you have Iman, if you believe in God, strong faith, you, will not, you should not have mental illness or a sp a spiritual, uh, psychological issues. That's completely not true. Because a person can have mental illness, can have psychological issues, even if he's prayed to hide you that night. When I think about Muslim mental health, I think about this as an opportunity to increase interconnectedness. When I was in isolation, I more than ever in my life suddenly needed a community. I've been in all types of of, of conferences, I've been at all types of events, been at all types of uh, activities, but I haven't seen a group of Muslim people, a group of non-Muslim people share and just be human and vulnerable to each other and be accepting of that humanity. Uh, Muslim mental health matters because we have a large diverse community and sometimes we, we hurt and uh, there aren't always safe places for us to discuss and talk about avenues for us to heal about that hurt. If we are experiencing pain together as a Muslim community but also as a wider community then we can also heal together. And in a sense you know finally acknowledging that, finally acknowledging the pain that I felt is actually what made it easier for me to overcome the trauma. Faith is a protective factor. Faith can be part of your resilience, but faith has to be part of the healing. If you have a brain that works differently, whether it's because you have bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder or depression or dyslexia or autism or whatever it is that makes your brain work differently, um, of course you're going to have problems that other people do not have. But you're also going to be able to see solutions where other people cannot see them. And I think that's something worth celebrating. Because when we put an academic component on these issues, then there's credibility, and then there is dialogue. So we thank you for your support and your efforts, and we pray that we see you in our future conferences and events. Peace and greetings. Salaamu Alaikum.